Hey there everyone and welcome to the channel. My name's Matt and today we're going to be playing through Space Quest 1, the first Space Quest game that Scott Murphy and Mark Crow wrote when they were at Sierra. Space Quest 1 was released in about 1987 I believe and so that we're playing this in the authentic way we're actually going to be doing this on an authentic piece of hardware so no emulation no DOS box or anything like that. So what you're seeing here is we're booting up our Laser Turbo XT, which was from about 1987, 1988, so about the same time the game was released. And this was kind of your typical home system that was relatively low cost and most people could afford. So we just get this to boot up and we're going to start our game, go into the classic Sierra directory, into SQ1, and then load it up. So here we got the cool welcome. Space Quest Chapter 1, The Serene Encounter. As I said, this is the first one the two guys from Andromeda, so Scott Murphy and Mark Crow wrote. See, it's copyright 1987. This is version 2.2, .2, so it's not the first one they released. Um, I think this is actually the last one. Um, so a few of the bugs and stuff that were in 1.1 .1 and a few of the Easter eggs don't work in this, but nonetheless, there's still quite a few for us to explore. As you can see here, we've got all the credits for the game development system, which was AGI. Um, and the programmers, Scott Murphy, Sol Ackerman and Ken Williams. Ken Williams being the CEO of Sierra at the time. And the graphics were done by Mark Pro. So, light years from Earth's solar system, the people of the galaxy of Ernon have been struggling to maintain the precious balance of life. The sun of Ernon is slowly dying. The planets grow cold. Food is no longer plentiful. Life will soon become impossible to sustain. The scientific community of Xenon has devised a plan to convert one of Ernon's lifeless planets into a new sun. The effort was centered around the development of a device called the Star Generator. The Star Generator would be capable of igniting an otherwise useless planet into a raging ball of flame. An expedition set out aboard the starship Arcada to successfully complete development and testing of the Star Generator. The Arcada is now returning triumphantly to Xenon with a fully operational Star Generator. So this is sort of where the story starts off. So we're serving as a member of the crew of the Arcada as a janitor. That's right, a janitor. And not a very good one. You probably would have been sacked and replaced if the were the Arcada not millions of kilometers from Xenon. So again, if you've watched the playthrough of Space Quest 3, um, we're still playing Roger Wilco here. And as we join our story, we've just completed one of our famous on-shift naps in one of the janitorial storage closets. So here we get the welcome screen. Um, you can log in with your name. It'll kind of quote you by name and say, you know, hello, Matthew, or hello, you know, whatever your name is. Uh, but if we leave it blank, it calls us Roger Wilco, which is what the character's called in all of the future episodes of Space Quest. You are startled by the sound of an alarm. It is followed by an urgent voice which warns the Arcada has been boarded by an unknown intruders. It ends abruptly. Okay, so not a lot to go on here. This is very much like Space Quest 3. If you watch that playthrough, you walk around, you find clues, you find items, and you work with them to progress the game. So if we go back into where we started, you have just stumbled to a small, dark, and very cluttered utility closet. Many things fall, most of them landing on you. Doesn't say much for your cleaning prowess. So let's do a look around. Can't see anything because it's dark. Turn on light. Say what? Yeah, okay. There's nothing to do in the closet. So let's go for a wander out into the ship. Now as it said, this, the Arcada has been boarded by unknown intruders. So they will pop up from time to time. We have to be a little bit careful. See the nice slow redraw rate using the authentic hardware. The sound you're hearing as well is coming from the authentic hardware. The PC speaker is actually plumbed into a mixing console. So, as I said earlier, nothing's emulated here. And the graphics we're using are actually EGA. So this computer has an EGA card in it, which is what the AGI engine was written for. And you do get a bit nicer color generation using the authentic EGA I found. Okay, so ooh, we have a person here on the ground. 
look person. Appears to be one of your crewmates. He is non-functional. Search person. Search the body of your crewmate and find a key card. Now here's a little bit of a trick. In Sierra Games, it says you found a key card. Uh, that doesn't mean you actually picked them up. Um, so you have to be careful here. So you've got to make sure that even though it says you found a key card, you've got to take it. Many a time I've gotten caught with that. And then later on in the game, it's like, oh man, I didn't actually get that item. So let's kind of wander back the way we came and actually explore this little room we walk through. All right, here we go. Look around. This is the Arcata's data archive. Many volumes of information are stored on the data cartridges. There is a computer console here. Okay, that's kind of cool. So it's like the library for the computer. Let's go look console. Ooh. The door opens and a man you recognize as one of the lab science centers. He appears to be injured. Let's see what's going on here. After a few steps, he slumped, slumped to the floor. Alright. Talk to man. It's current condition, the man is not much of a conversationalist. Look, man. A large laser hole has been burned in his uniform, through which you can see his previously unexposed tissue. Struggling painfully, he raises up on one elbow. Okay. He tells you the Arcada is under attack and the star generator is in danger. You'd better leave if you value your life. He looks over towards the shelves full of cartridges and utters the words, Astral Body. He then settles to the floor lifeless. Okay, cool. So that's a bit of a clue. So let's look on Sol. Okay. So technically we've got to look screen. Welcome to the Arcata Data Archive, Model DX Storage and Retrieval. Astral Body is the title he mentioned. So the title catalog is only available, top security clearance only. So in other words, you can't search the catalog. We had to rely on the fact the guy told us it was Astral Body. Cool, looks like it's found it. See there in its little like gripping claws, there's the cartridge. Another classic, if I walk away now, the cartridge will sit there. You actually have to take the cartridge. Oops, I'm going to spill. There we go. Okay, so now if we have a look at our inventory, we're carrying a cartridge and a key card. Let's have a look at the cartridge. This is a data storage cartridge on the words uh, astral body formation the untold story cool so who knows what that does at this point in time but hey we've got it that's kind of cool all right let's head down the elevator and see what's going on downstairs here Alright, so we've got two guys here, search body, nothing, and search body, nothing, okay, let's have a look at this broken door, okay, so let's have a look around, this is the star generated development lab, Due to your incredibly low security clearance, you've never been allowed access to this room. So it looks like something's missing in the middle of the room, which I'm guessing will be the star generator. So yeah, a few more unfortunate people in here. There's an empty pedestal here. It looks like it used to be used to hold some large object, maybe the star generator. So yeah, Star Generator has been stolen. So, I kind of skipped a little bit there because it takes a while, but none of those bodies in that room have anything useful. Neither does that guy. And let's go down this elevator. 
So now we're on the lower deck. Here I'm going to save the game. Ooh, you think you hear footsteps. Now that's a little bit of a clue. See this dude over here? That's one of the captors, so that's the Sarian. Um, pretty much if you walk out here, he'll shoot you. So, unable to see anyone here, the alien leaves to search elsewhere. Obviously doesn't have very good uh, peripheral vision because he has uh, not seen us in the elevator, but that's cool. Let's save the game. Save game. Alright, let's go back up to the top here. Call this Matthew 1. Okay. Now the dude's walked away, we should be safe to walk around for a little bit. Might as well do a look around again, see what's here. Section of the lower levels of the Arcada. Again, I'm skipping a little bit here, just in the interest of time. Um, the bodies here don't have anything useful on them. Do another look around. You're in the central control area of the Arcada. The reactor domes pulsate irregularly as if they had been tampered with. This does not look good. Through the window, just above the control console, you can see down into the vehicle bay below. So, if you hang around for long enough, um, the reactor actually does blow up. And you get a nice message on the screen saying kaboom. Um, but let's have a look at this console over here. On the console by the window are two buttons marked open bay door and close bay door. Let's press open bay door. Cool, so the bay doors are open. So we're going to need that so we can get out of here. Now over here we've got a door, and this one's guarded, well it's locked I should say, by a keycard. And the keycard we retrieved from the person earlier goes in here. So you slide the keycard into its slot, you hear an audible click, you take the keycard back. Cool. Alright, so now we're down in this. Not sure what this room is, let's look around. This is the flight prep room of the Arcada. As you can see, there is a sign on the back wall, as well as two closet doors and two buttons. Okay. Press left button. Look. Object. Sure you want to look at that look. What was it? Looks like an electrical gadget of some sort. Okay. Take gadget. Press right button. Ah, cool. So this looks like a flight suit. Take flight suit. Nice. Not sure what happens if you don't take the flight suit. Perhaps if you walk out into the depressurized hangar bay, you asphyxiate or something. Pretty sure that's what I remember from back in the day. So let's have another look at the console here. The console is adorned with many sta status indicators. One button on the right is marked airlock. Press airlock. Yeah, pretty sure. If you're wearing the uh, the clothes at this point without the flight suit, even though it looks like the helmet's just kind of a, a half face thing, um, you'll asphyxiate. It's a warning. Bay door open, I think the sign says. Which is a good thing because we need to be able to get out of here. Right, save the game here. Matthew 2. Alright. So, what's this little thing over here? Is this kind of a... Oh, okay. It's a hole. Well, Roger Wilco, that was smooth half gainer into the elevator shaft. Did you decide you would think more clearly with your brains reorganised? Okay. So, that's an elevator shaft, not like a staircase. Okay, it's too bad you failed miserably and doomed all your people to a horrible death at the hands of the Sarians. If you continue playing as skillfully as this, we'll never have a chance for a sequel. Better luck next time. Okay. Let's restore our game.
Okay, here we go. Let's look at this console. Ah, there's a button main platform. Some gauges which don't interest you. Press platform. Cool, there's now an escape pod here. Alright, looks like there's a bit of a door here on the left hand side. The graphics are a little bit subtle because of the resolution, but you can kind of see this little wing thing. Get in pod. Cool. Now we can have a lot of fun with this pod if I remember correctly, so let's save it again. Save me having to go backwards and forwards. Okay. Closed door. It's probably a good start. Done. Look around. You're sitting in the pilot seat of the escape pod facing toward the window. There is a dark console before you and a seat belt strap to your side. Confused as to what you should do, you wish you'd paid more attention during crew orientation. I think a good start would be to put on the seat belt. Okay, look, console. The console consists of screen, pod status indicators, a throttle and some buttons. The buttons are marked auto nav, power and don't touch. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Press power. Okay, that's a good start. Look, screen. Escape pod systems activated, ready for instructions. Emergency program initiated, pull throttle to execute launch sequence. Sweet. So if we pull throttle, that should get us out of here. Hey, we're moving. The escape pod moves slowly out of the vehicle bay and into space. Cool, so that must be our ship there that looks like a kind of weird looking thing, like a bit of a white brain. But congratulations, you've narrowly escaped an explosive death. Don't start patting yourself on the back just yet though. You're now traveling aimlessly through the cosmos. All right. So remember, I think there was something about an auto nav button. So let's look console again. So we've got auto nav power and don't touch. So probably the best thing to do here is to initiate the auto nav, but let's save it again. If you haven't guessed, saving frequently in a Sierra game is uh, kind of vital, especially if you want to have a bit of fun with it. It's very easy to die. So let's press don't touch. Said don't touch, I warned you. Okay. Hey, that's King's Quest. <laughs> oh, Ken, did you hear something? It was probably just the Gators entertaining another Space Quest player. Go back to sleep, Berta. So yeah, that's referring to Ken Williams, CEO of Sierra, and Roberta Williams, his wife, who uh, was one of the creators of King's Quest, um, the primary creator. So yeah, that little scene there is from King's Quest 1, I believe, where you uh, enter the castle. Through a strange qu quirk of fate, or was it, you've stumbled upon into a place beyond time, space, and dimension. You've entered the Daventry Zone. That's right, the land of King's Quest. This will not help you now since you're playing series Space Quest. Yeah, the classic gate is in the moat. If you've, uh, we'll get to King's Quest on the channel one day. Um, but yeah, if you step in there, you just get eaten immediately. I never quite got the moat in this game because there's that little like bridge that's non-retractable. So if you just walk around it over the bridge, it's fine. But yeah, whatever. Too bad playing Space Quest. Yep. Okay. Better luck next time. So let's restore it back to where we were in the pod, and let's try again. Set. This time, let's press auto nav. Okay, hopefully this is a little bit more useful. So while we're waiting for the auto nav to do the stuff here, um, as I said, we're playing on authentic hardware, so you might hear the clicking of the keyboard, which is kind of cool. Um, oh, here we go. The monitor flashes. You study it to see what new information has been displayed. I find with these games. Um, Playing it on the authentic stuff is so much better than actually playing on DOSBox. Okay, so Planet Profile Corona. 3,744.3 kilometers in diameter. It's breathable atmosphere. Don't know about life or civilization. 40 degrees. The nav system is locked in. The auto nav system is locked on the small planet of Corona and the pod has begun its approach. Nothing to do now, but hang on. All right. It's a rather desert looking planet, 40 degree temperature, 
Nice purple sky. Ooh, that was a hard impact. Alright, so after a skull jarring landing, you peer through the shattered viewport out into the deserted landscape. A feeling of utter desolation settles in. You're in a fine mess now, Roger Wilco. Okay. Let's just have a look around the pod. You're inside the escape pod. It appears that more fragile devices were damaged severely by the impact of the landing. A survival kit is broken loose from someplace. Let's take that kit. That's going to be useful. I think if you just remove the seat belt. And the door has been permanently opened by the impact of the landing. Let's just get out the pod. Let's have another look at the pod. The pod seems to be semi-destroyed. Now here's something that took me a long time the first time I played this game. You've got a look windshield. Or look glass. It's quite sandy down there that you see a piece of highly reflective glass has broken out of the pod window. I would have expected if you do look pod it would have said that. Um, oh okay. It does. On closer inspection you see the piece of highly reflective glass has broken out the pod window. I don't know if it was an older version um, but I remember it didn't give you that clue to begin with and you need the glass a bit later on. So let's save the game again here. So let's just have a wander around the desert and we'll see what we can find. Nothing much to look at out here. Oh, okay. Something just ate us. You've just become a vertical meal for the locum welcoming of Betty. Ah, oh, these are great. Okay, so heading in that direction, not a great idea. Let's restore again. So later on it tells you a bit more about that creature. Um, I think his name is Grell. Let's just try going north. Again, a bit more sand. And we've been eaten again. Okay, so north, also not a great plan. Let's try east, which I'm pretty sure is the correct direction to go. Here we go, so we've got some cliffs and stuff. Let's just kind of wander over here to the east a bit further. See what we can find. So as you might be noticing as we're playing this, the game's quite quiet because it only uses the PC speaker. Let's do a bit of a look around here. But nonetheless, you get a lot more from the commentary in this in terms of the text, which uh, sort of fills in the gaps. So. You're in a desert cliff area. There's a natural land bridge in the distance. What are these plants? You're not near that. Let's try and get a bit closer. Look, plant. Looks a lot like spinach. Well, let's take some plant. Tear off a piece of the plant. Save often, save frequently. Okay, let's see if we can eat the plant. You plant your teeth into the strange plant and take a large bite only to find it tastes exquisitely bad. If you had your choice, you would you... Sorry, <laughs> if you had your choice, you would choose any form of death over a meal like this. Okay, so the plant is not that edible. But it doesn't seem that we've died, so that's fine. So, the easiest way to progress, the way we'll do this now, is heading up this little path here. Which takes us on top of this plateau. And as any Sierra game sort of was written of the era, 
uh, it's very easy to walk off to the side of these ledges and plummet to your death. So we have to be a little bit careful as we walk through here. Okay. Notice there's like some cracks in this bridge. As we walk over it, there are now some more cracks. So that bridge has a limited life. So just do a quick look around. You're in a unique area. There's a natural land bridge here as well as life in the form of plants. Let's have a look at this rock. It's a very large rock on the natural bridge. Okay. So later on, we can use that rock for something. But I actually prefer not to. There are technically, I guess, two ways of getting rid of something that's about to come and land and kind of get in our way. One of them involves the rock. The other one actually involves solving two puzzles. I guess you call it with one stone or two birds with one stone. So we're going to find that out a little bit later, but just remember the rocks there. And we'll, ooh, okay, what's this falling out of the sky? Suddenly, you see a large black metal sphere falling out of the sky, a Sarian spider droid. Upon touching down on the planet's surface, it sprouts legs and begins to search for you. You recall from an article in Space Piston magazine, this droid is designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when contact's made. That's kind of cool. Okay. Let's just look droid. It's probably not going to tell us much. Oh, okay, because we're up high. Um, the cool thing about the spider droid is uh, it's like... I'm not sure what they called it, but those droids in Star Wars um, on the planet Hoth, when the Empire was sending out droids to try and locate where the Resistance um, was located. So it sent them out to all these planets, and the droid lands, and they kind of shoot it. And I think this is a bit of a homage to that. So let's have a look at this arch while we're here. You see a pair of oddly curved rock formations. They point at each other as to form an arch. Yeah, so the idea of this is kind of, again, like those droids in Star Wars where it was to seek out the resistance and eliminate them. In this case, it's here to seek out you because the Sarians detected your launch with your escape pod. So let's go down this elevator. And here at the bottom, do a quick look around. This is one end of what appears to be a large cavern. The only way to go is to the left. There is a rock nearby. I love it when they give you a clue like that. Take rock. Done. Okay. So let's head to the west. And... Okay, so here we have like a little... Like geysery thing going. And that floor looks kind of weird. If it looks weird, it's time to save the game. Okay. Let's kind of go over to this geyser. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a monster under that grate. You've been snatched from existence by a tentacled beast lurking beneath the grate. You feel the painful sting of digestive fluids. Okay. So, the grate is a problem. That's kind of cool though. Alright. So I think if we hug this wall, yeah, we should be fine. Awesome. Let's have a look at this geyser. There's a geyser cone here. It's rhythmically spewing hot steam. Trick is it's a cone. So if we put rock in geyser, we should be able to block it. And hey, a door opens. It's another kind of quirky puzzle that when I was younger and I played this game took quite a while to figure out. Now this here is uh, kind of fun too. So I've seen, um, well, I've, I've played this game through a lot of times with a few friends and I only figured this one out um, quite late in the piece. If you look at this pool, you gaze intently at the purplish pool of liquid, the first real sign of moisture on the planet. The pool seems to have no bottom. The gentle dripping has a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. I think if you type drink liquid, it says you can't. So, drink pool. Say what? I think if you go get in pool, 
is not the way to get there. Can I do it from here? Jump in pool. Sorry, this game is no jumping zone. Climb into pool. I was sure that you could get into this pool. Drink from pool. There we go. As you lean over to drink from the tempting pool of liquid, as your lips touch the fluid, you feel a pain which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they say when they, what they mean when they say, don't drink the water. So yeah, you got to get the syntax just right because I remember again playing this and you could never drink from it, but then one day I worked out you could. So as it turns out, you now have no head. So that's right, you have no head. That darn pool must have been filled with acid. You obviously can't go on living that way. So, yeah, okay. Let's not do that. But again, one of the appeals I find of this game is actually finding all these little things that you, you can do which you shouldn't do. And what the creators have actually said, like in the text, is it's like, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that. That's like kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Alright, so now we're going to go through to the next screen, which has the most annoying sound in the world, and hopefully I've got their PC speaker sound turned down low enough, because it is horrendous. Okay, so just in case this is really loud on the recording, I'm going to get through this really quick. So the idea of this is we're going to use that reflective glass that we got from the sh pod and we're going to use that to shine the laser beam back into itself. So we've quite cleverly fried it into interoperability. So that's handy. Now, just for fun, and this is another thing as a kid I remember quite vividly having problems with. I'm just going to restore it back to before we fried the laser beam. And we're going to see what happens if you just try and walk through it. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Again, that gives you an idea of how long the loading screens used to take back in the day on the uh, the original computers. And again, this this computer is an original XT. It's not. Well, it is a Turbo XT, but I'm not using the Turbo mode, so it's running at the uh, original frequency, which is 4.77 megahertz, I believe. Whereas the Turbo mode boosts it up to, I think it's 10. But the loading times aren't terrible. Okay, so let's just walk through this beam thing. Let's keep on walking. And you fall into a pile. You're now lying in the floor in many pieces. Guess those beams meant business, Roger Wilco. So yeah, I remember a lot of times having that happen and trying to figure out how the heck do I get around this thing. And I remember trying to climb over the poles and trying to climb up the wall and all sorts of stuff and then worked out that there was some glass from the escape pod. Like I was talking about in Space Quest 3 playthrough, if you've watched that, um, there was a hint line available from Sierra. You could call like a, a number, but it was charged at a ridiculous rate. And because I'm outside the US, you had to pay international fees. So I never had the privilege of calling that one up. It was all on our own. There was no internet. Well, no internet back then that had walkthroughs, put it that way. Okay, so here we are at some little drips. You can sort of hear them going on in the background. These drips you can see are feeding through that pool down the bottom, so we know that they're going to be acid. So we need to avoid these. Now, at playing at the regular speed with this PC, it's actually quite easy. You just kind of time it. You can see this first drip goes, the second drip goes. Get walking, stop here, wait for that drip, and walk through. Much harder on DOSBox um, and newer computers because the timing is slightly wrong and it makes the drips go too fast. Nevertheless, I'm still going to save it here just in case. We have to come back. Okay. So let's continue around this little curve thing. And just before, we picked up that gadget um, from uh, the Arcada and that sort of like a flight room launch bay thing in the closet. If we look at the gadget, you can now see that written on it is the words dialect translator. One into the dial and a light is currently dim. So 
the dialect translator is like a universal translator, kind of like they had in Star Trek, where it converts alien languages so you can understand what they're saying. If you don't turn this on and you walk in here, so let's do that just for fun. It uh, gives you a bit of a, a weird result. So, wait for that to save. There we go. So we head into this cave thing. And as soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly you become aware of the fact you cannot move or speak. A strange unknown force has taken over. It's this big kind of alien, I don't know if it's like a hologram or a projection or something comes up. A massive holographic image, there you go, appears before you. You sense that you are the only life form in the area. So basically you're in this room and there's no one else here. So this is just a, like a recording type thing. Okay. Joel Wilfobzek would you little wiggle for so quick? Okay, this is not helpful. So, basically, this dude's just talking away, and we've got no idea what's going on. So, yep, cool. That's yep. Because of your inability to understand the alien's language, he has sent you back to the surface. So it is actually possible to complete the game if you don't understand a word he said if you know what you have to do so that kind of intimates you've played it before um but for the purpose of this so we're all on the same page let's just go back we'll actually turn on the dialect translator and we'll actually understand what the dude says so turn on gadget turn on the dial and the light begins to glow oh whoa whoa that was a close one. As soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Again, same old prompt. Except, this time, you should be able to understand what this dude says. So, you've found your way to my hallowed chamber. I've been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears that you're up to the proverbial estuary without the means of locomotion. So that's a, uh, a correct way of saying up a certain creek without a paddle. But yeah, that's pretty cool. You're obviously in need of transportation. Let us see if you're worthy of our assistance. Okay, so this dude wants something in return. On the surface lives a beast called Oret. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Okay. So here comes a few different options and ways of progressing. So we're not going to save it just yet because we need to kind of go down here. So remember, we've got to find this Oret person, and we've got to somehow destroy him and bring back some evidence. But also, recall from just before, we have a spider droid that's kind of mowing around the place, which, if we come in contact with, is going to blow us up. Now, you can kind of, um, I guess, avoid the spider droid and just, you know, find Oret, do your thing, um, and go back. But the way the game's intended to be played is that you actually destroy the spider droid. So what we need to do is we need to get him on this, well, one thing, or one option, I should say, of what we need to do is get the spider droid onto this screen. You can then guess what we're going to do with this rock. So we're probably going to, ah, here he is. Okay, cool. So suddenly we see the thing drop out the sky. Now... It doesn't take much of a stretch of the imagination if you're here, you can kind of go, okay, well, if we push a rock on this dude, he's going to blow up, which is pretty cool in itself. So let's give that a try. We kind of have to wander. Oh, what? sorry. We kind of have to wait until this guy wanders literally underneath the rock itself, which I think is about in line with the little squiggle by the plant. Um, so you, this is a bit random. 
he just kind of goes back and forth. Alright, so I'm going to just uh, cut in now with a bit of a jump cut, I'm afraid. So, I was waiting around for this spider droid for ages before and just rambling on. So, rather than ramble on forever and ever and ever, I've now just gone to the point where the droid is on the screen. So, here we are. Spider droid's kind of wandering around. And the obvious choice here is to push the rock onto the spider droid as he kind of wanders underneath us. So, let's just kind of wait. This can take ages. As I said, I jump cut this in because it took ages just for the droid to even land. So hopefully he'll wander underneath us fairly soon. This is one way of solving this puzzle, is pushing the rock onto the droid. Um, there's two other ways you can do it. Oh, let's try it. Oh, no, he's still off at an angle. Um, here we go. Boom. Okay. It was not known that you are the master of the rock. That was a fine effort. Okay, so that went much faster than when I tried this earlier. So cool, that is one way to solve it. So now we've blown the droid up, he's gone, we can wander around freely. So let's, so we'll save it anyway. We're probably not gonna use this save game though, but we'll call this Matthew 11. So now we can wander around freely. So that's option one. Option two is you just avoid the droid. So if you kind of wander around and you find Orit, which is in the next part, um, or it will, you know, be there. You can get the or it part. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then you just avoid the droid and come back. The third option involves all of the puzzles. So the spider droid, the or it, everything, all in one. And that's the one we're actually going to try. So let's go to back to Matthew 10. So we haven't destroyed the droid yet. We've just, the rock is still there, and we're just going to keep on trucking. Now this is a little harder, but it is certainly possible. And I think it may even give you a slightly better score, but I'm not sure. So, the alien beast said we must destroy Oret and bring back evidence of his remains. Now you can see on the right there, there's a bit of a cave looking thing. Pretty good chance that's where Oret's hiding, so that's where we're going to head. But first, we need to avoid that spider droid. And that can be a little tricky. Okay, so here's the problem. We've got the spider droid on the screen. And he is going to keep on looking for us. He can't come up the ramp, though. That's the good news. So if we kind of go on the screen, off the screen, he should disappear, I hope, which he does. Let's quickly make our way... Ah. Okay, we might have to do this slightly. Ah. You've just been blown into bite-sized chunks by a Sarian spider droid. So let's... Oh man. I need him to basically be off the screen. I don't know if he will while I'm down here. So let's just see if we can sneak past him. Okay. Let's go out this way. So basically we've got to avoid him and get back to the cave that we kind of saw earlier. Which is up kind of where the droid came from on that last screen. So, provided we keep him behind us, we're generally okay. But occasionally, he'll come rocketing in from, uh, from another region, which makes it kind of hard. So yeah, one option is he walks in kind of from below or above or wherever. The other option with the droid is that he'll sometimes... Uh, okay, got to go up a bit. Um, just launch in from the sky again like he did, like a projectile, when the first time we saw him. Okay. So here we are back at the arch. If we go down one, we should be near a cave, which we are. So here's where it gets tricky. And we're going to save it. So the droid is following us. Let's call this Matthew 12. 
Let's see what happens when the droid follows us into this cave. So in here is Oren. We're going to meet him in a sec. So let's quickly just get behind this rock, because we don't want Oren to eat us, or this droid to blow us up. And the droid's going to kind of casually wander in here. And Oren's going to come and say hello, and boom. The cave interior now features a lovely new, in new jagged metal liberated entrails motif. The stench? Woo! Not even an all text adventure would attempt that description. So what we did there was rather than blowing up the droid, you know, with the rock, we basically led the droid in here, it blew Orrid up for us, happy days. Now I mentioned that there's alternate ways of solving these puzzles obviously. So you may be thinking, okay if I drop the rock on the droid, how do I then blow up Orrit? Well, let's investigate that in just a second. So I'm just going to first look around. The odor in here is less than desirable. On the ground rests a gleaming chunk of Orrit's anatomy. So take the Orrit part. It oozes into your fingers. So, let's save this game. And I'm just going to save it as Matthew 12. So we'll come back to it. So that's, as I said, that's one way. Now how do we do it if we blew up the spider droid with the rock? So let's go to Matthew 11, which is where the spider droid was blown up with the rock. So you can see the rock's gone, the spider droid's gone, happy days. So let's wander back in this direction. And We're going to need to use something else to get rid of Orrit. Now, just before we get there, we're going to open up that survival kit that we found in the pod. So, kind of wander in down here. I wander up. Now this way of doing it, so dropping the rock and what you're about to see, is the way that I always used to solve this up until probably, oh we don't need to save it, um, I don't know, probably 10, 15 years ago when I played it through and I thought, oh, I wonder what happens if I'll do this, and sure enough it worked. So let's open up the survival kit. So this is your survival kit, it contains a xenon army knife and a can of dehydrated water. The comedy of this is, is that water is, by definition, H2O, so it's hydrated. Hydrated means contains water. So if you dehydrate water, you remove water from water. So there is no water, so it, it can't really exist, which is a kind of a cool um, thing, I guess, that the guys have put in here. So you can see in our inventory, we've got dehydrated water, the army knife, and the survival kit. Look, water. This is a cylinder of dehydrated water. At the top of the cylinder is a regulator and a short nozzle. On the side is a label. Read label. The can says, Pelvitron's dehydrated water, H2. All you add is air, makes 10 gallons. So, I guess you could call it dehydrated water. In this case, you've got hydrogen in the cylinder. You can take the oxygen out of the air um, via some reactor. Directions. To you, simply drink from nozzle. Meted amounts will be dispensed. Caution. Do not attempt to open or rupture. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. So here's the key. Do not rupture. Now, I will save it here just because we can kind of get a clue from Orit just by himself from, you know, letting him capture us. Oh, the heat is causing you to develop a thirst. Just for fun, drink water. You place your lips and draw. The fluid is not a very reasonable facsimile of water. It's released slowly. It's tasting slightly terrible. It quenches your thirst, at least for the time being. So you can drink from the water bottle. But let's go in here and see what happens if we just kind of meet up with Orit. So he immediately comes towards us and says, what have we here? And he squishes us into a basketball. Orrit has transformed you into a new source of recreation. You, of course, don't survive this treatment. It's tough to make friends around here. 
Okay, so Oret's pretty keen to play with anything. So what do you think will happen if we throw some dehydrated water at him? Do you think he's going to play for it? We'll just ignore the heat that's making us develop thirst because it's not going to matter in a second anyway. So quickly we need to get behind this rock. Otherwise Oret just kind of, you know, kills us. Throw water at Oret. Oret, always in the mood for a snack, snatches the can out of the air with his spacious oral cavity, chews and swallows it. He notices a rumbling deep within his abdomen. Ooh, he's swelling up. Oret's eyes prove to be bigger than his stomach for once. Incapable of being history's first living reservoir, his body succumbs to the intense internal pressure created by the nearly 10 gallons of instantly reconstituted water. As a special bonus, you received a much needed shower. So, same thing, we've destroyed Oret. There's an Oret piece over here. Except this time you've lost your bottled water. Whereas we could have kept it with the other solution. Um, so let's restore it back to our other solution. Because the other thing that can happen um, is if you use the dehydrated water to blow up Oret and you get thirsty, obviously um, there is no way to drink anymore. So we'll open the survival kit again. Now if it asks us if we're thirsty, then we obviously have the ability to have a drink, which is kind of cool. Alright, so we've been playing for about 45-50 minutes now. I think that's a good time to stop for part 1. Thanks again for joining me on this playthrough of Space Quest 1. Hopefully you've enjoyed hearing and seeing it played through on the original hardware. Stay tuned for Space Quest 1 Part 2, where we'll see if we can get off this planet, which is more difficult than you'd think, and actually see if we can catch up with the Star Generator and either return it to Xenon, destroy it, do something with it, maybe destroy the Sarians in the process, we will see. Thanks again and stay tuned. Catch you on the next one.